Speaker, the very Reverend Dr. Mander Ishaq from the Lutheran Church in Bethlehem. You may remember Reverend Mander Ishaq's Christmas message that if Jesus Christ was born today, he would have been born under the rubble in Gaza. He said that the hypocrisy and racism of the Western world is transparent and appalling. He told the West, I never ever want to hear you lecture us on human rights or international law again. It was Munger who pointed out that there is a theology a theology of empire. It is, he said, a powerful tool, a powerful tool to mask oppression under the cloak of divine sanction. He said it divides people into us and them. It dehumanizes and demonizes. It speaks of land. It speaks of land without people. Even, even when they know the land has a people, the land has a people. Friends, we are, we are that people. Palestine is that land. Palestine is that land, our land. As, as our great poet, Mahmoud Darwish said, على هذه الأرض ما يستحق الحياة على هذه الأرض سيدة الأرض أم البدايات أم النهايات كانت تسمى فلسطين صارت تسمى فلسطين سيدتي أستحق لأنك سيدتي أستحق الحياة and here straight from Palestine from Bethlehem, here is one of the best of us. Please give a huge, massive welcome to my dear friend, Reverend Dr. Mondra Ishaq. Thank you, London. We hear you. Thank you for your support. And to be honest, you have been one of the very few signs of hope in these very, very dark days. I come to you as a proud Palestinian. And I bring you greetings from the birthplace of Jesus from Bethlehem in Palestine. And when I see your support, and when I see your passion for justice, I am assured that freedom is coming. I remember the words of Jesus. I remember the words of Jesus. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for righteousness, for justice, for they shall be satisfied. We shall be satisfied. It has been far, far too long for us in Palestine. And today we say enough, enough colonization, enough occupation, enough apartheid, enough of this siege, and today we say in one voice, stop this genocide. <laughs> Friends, Gaza today is indeed the moral compass of the world. And I know that you have come from different faith and secular traditions, and I greet you and bless you. And believe me, you are on the right side of history. This war, this war I truly believe, has clearly divided our world. And maybe this is a good thing. We need to know where people stand. And when I say Gaza is the moral compass of the world, we either side with the logic of power and ruthlessness and with the lords of war, or we side with the oppressed. It's really a simple choice. You either support a genocide, you either turn a blind eye and justify your genocide, 
or you cry out, no, not in our name. Gaza is a human cry. Gaza is a moral cry. This is not about politics. For if you are not shaken to your core by the brutal killing of more than 12,000 precious Palestinian children, it is on you. There is nothing we can do to help you. The world will not recover. Our humanity will not recover. And history will not be merciful, should not be merciful, towards those who are complicit with the genocide. Their names are stained in history books. And as a man of faith, as a pastor, I am convinced that deep inside they will be haunted by the images of the children and mothers of Gaza. And we must make sure we keep reminding them, shaming them for their complicity and for their role. At the same time, we are grateful for the support of many around the world. And today again I say, London, we hear you. From Palestine, we hear you. We need to turn the table on the lords of war. We need to turn the table. And the streets today, the streets today hold moral authority and credibility, not the so-called civilized that praise human rights and international law while turning a blind eye to a genocidal war in Gaza. This is where the moral credibility lies today. Today we think and salute our heroes in Gaza. We salute the first responders, the journalists, the nurses, the doctors, many of whom have sacrificed their lives. Of them, of these heroes, we say the world was not worthy of them. They are too honorable. They have honor. Dear friends, we should not rest until this war has ended. This should be our commitment. We owe it to them. We owe it to the people of Gaza, to the children of Gaza. We owe it to the heroic sacrifices of those people of Gaza. Let this be our commitment. We cannot fail them. We will not fail them. We should not stop protesting. This is the least we can do to them. For when all is said and done, when all is said and done, we will all look in the mirror and ask, where was I when Gaza was going through a genocide? How will we answer to them? And we will say, we were in the streets, we were in the squares, we were in parliaments, we were turning tables, we were advocating, pleading, shouting and praying, stop this genocide. We were working for justice. And believe me, the day is coming when we will live life that is free from apartheid, free from occupation. Justice is coming. Freedom is coming. Truth is coming. Let justice roll down like waters. Friends, and I speak now from the heart, never in my life have I been more proud and honored to be a Palestinian more than these last 130 days. I am proud of our resilience, of our sumud. I am proud of our solidarity with one another, our unity. And when I say we will be okay and that we will recover, I say it because I know my people, I know who we are as Palestinians. Palestine is our homeland. We are deeply rooted in Palestine. And for those of you who are exiled around the world, I know that Palestine lives in you. So today I say thank you on behalf of every Palestinian for your solidarity. Thank you for your tireless efforts. From the bottom of our heart, we love and appreciate every one of you. Today I pray and I hope, I ask you to pray with me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, send true peacemakers and justice seekers into our world. Lord, awaken the conscience of world leaders. Lord, stop 
this genocide and we say together stop this genocide thank you